Welcome to the demo of AWS Nitro Enclaves. My name is William Yap, and I'm a product manager at EC2. In today's demo, I'll be going through the steps needed to manage the life cycle of an enclave, as well as the tools you'll be using to do that. Before we begin with the demo, let me go through some basic concepts of the Nitro Enclave life cycle. AWS Nitro Enclaves is a new EC2 capability that allows you to create isolated compute environments called enclaves from an EC2 instance. These enclaves are virtual machines that are isolated, hardened, and highly constrained. They have no persistent storage, no external networking, no access to any user from the EC2 instance. So even if you are a root user or an admin user from the instance, you will not be able to access or SSH into the Enclave. In this demo, I'll go through the steps in creating an Enclave, how you would be creating an application or putting the code inside the Enclave and then terminating it. The life cycle of Enclaves are controlled by a new tool called the Nitro CLI. This is a tool that you'll be installing on your EC2 instance itself. There are five main commands to the Nitro CLI. The ability to build an Enclave image file. Ability to run an Enclave. To describe the running Enclaves. To access the read-only console of the Enclave. This only works if you're running the Enclave in debug mode. And lastly, to terminate the Enclaves. Now with these concepts, let's move on to the demo. And this is just for example, you could run Nitro Enclaves on a good range of Linux-based um, operating system. So to start with Nitro CLI, I'm going to show you the command set available. And I do that by just typing Nitro CLI. CLI is a tool that manages the Enclave lifecycle. Uh, we can see all the commands that we are going to test out here today. And we'll be starting with the build Enclave command. This is the command that you'll be using to convert an, an, a Docker image into a, an Enclave image file. The Enclave image file will be critical in, uh, will be one of the critical inputs in creating the Enclave. So I'm going to start by showing you the Docker image that I've created in advance. Um, I'm just going to type Docker image ls. And you can see here, this is the Hello Enclave image that I've created with the demo tag. Now it's important to note that um, we're not going to create a Docker container. We're not going to be running a Docker container. We've been just using Docker as a convenient file format to package my application. And what my application does is it just say hello Enclave. And we're going to then use this build command to convert this Docker image into an Enclave image file. So you start off command with Nitro CLI. I'm going to type here the build enclave. The Docker URI is the location of the enclave, the, the Docker image. Um, it's called enclave, hello enclave, and with a demo tag. And the output of the file, you can specify the name of it. I'm just going to say it's hello.ef. Just correct this quick typo over here. So I've managed to create a, an Enclave image file called hello.ef. A couple of things to note on, on the output of this command, you would see that a range of hashes has been generated. These are hashes and measurements that you'll be using for the annotation process. Uh, PCR0, for example, is the hash of the Enclave image file. If you were to add a code or change anything in the Enclave image, uh, this hash would change as well. Uh, PCR1 is the hash of the kernel and uh, the bootstrap. And PCR2 is the hash of the, the application that you have inside the Enclave. I'm going to double check that I've created this file. So I see it in my directory called hello.yeah. 
and I'm now ready to start running an enclave. And to run the enclave, I'll be using the run enclave command. With Nitro Enclaves, you have the flexibility in determining how many CPU core and memory you want to donate into creating the enclave. Um, this is a command that you'll be, this is the parameters that you'll be specifying. And, this, and in this example, I'm going to select two CPU cores to be donated to the enclave and a memory of 512 megabytes. You also need to specify the path of the enclave image that you want to be using to boot the enclave. That's hello.ef. Lastly, I'm going to add a debug mode flag here. Um, I'm adding a debug mode so I can show you the uh, console command and access the read-only console of this enclave. Okay, so I've entered the command. Um, we've created an enclave. Um, let's go through some of the uh, this outputs over here. Um, enclave CID stands for context identifier. This is like the IP address for VSOC uh, or for the local socket. So you got a CID of number 17. Um, it shows the number of memory that's been allocated and the two CPU cores that have been uh, carved out. An enclave has an enclave ID, and you will be using this in the example to specify certain things. Now that you've created an enclave, let's, let's query describe enclaves to see if we can see this enclave registered there. So by typing the describe enclaves command, I can see all these details again. Uh, you can also see that um, you have the debug mode flag indicated over here to show that it's running in debug mode. Now to view the read-only output of the Enclave console. And I'm going to use the console command. Again, I'm going to start with Nitro CLI console, and then I have to specify the Enclave ID that I want to connect to. I'm just going to copy it over here and press enter. So this is the output of the console. Uh, my application was saying hello for the enclave side. You can, you can see the output over here. If I were to scroll up, you can see that uh, it's connected to the console for enclave 17. That's the CID that I've mentioned earlier. After accessing the console of the Enclave. I'm now ready to terminate it, and that's simple. Just type Nitro CLI, and then uh, terminate Enclave. You need to specify the Enclave ID as well. Just to copy it over here, and now we have successfully terminated an Enclave. Nitro Enclaves is compatible with any programming languages and framework. To show you that, let's uh, let's finish off by um, taking a random application and running it into an enclave. Now let's try to take a standard Hello World image from Docker and run that inside the enclave. So to do that, um, let's start by typing Docker image Docker pool. Um, let's pick the, the uh, Hello World image from their repository. You can see that, you can double check that I have it in, in this EC2 instance. You see it over here, Hello World, latest, and this is the general one that's, that, that Docker has in its repository. And now I could, I could show you again um, with the Nitro CLI build on close command. Just name it hello2.ef. You can create that into an enclave image file. And then you're going to be able to run it.
Uh, I can specify that I want the same amount of resources as before. You see, I'm able to run this enclave. It's just this application that I picked up from from the internet. Um, that's that. That's all the steps needed to manage the lifecycle of enclaves. Thank you for taking the time to view this demo.